what would Kampara's flooding look like without the Nachibubo channel? When Kampara skies open up, millions of liters of storm water have just one main escape route, the Nachibubo channel. Acting as the city's primary storm water artery, it drains over 95% of the central urban area, including the bustling business district, crowded informal settlements, and busy industrial zones. Without it, Kampara streets would be submerged, and we have all seen the floods that from time to time disrupt movements and even claim lives. By design, Nachivubo prevents what experts call preview flooding, rainfall that cannot soak into the groundwater. Instead, the channel directs this water safely towards Lake Victoria, sparing low lying neighborhoods from traffic chaos, property damage, and costly economic losses. But that protection has been faltering. Years of sanitation and indiscriminate dumping of plastics have choked the channel reducing its flow capacity. Encroachment by unplanned construction have narrowed its path, and Kampara's rapid growth means more tarmac, more concrete, and less natural ground for water absorption, piling even more pressure on a system built for a smaller city. The results, even moderate rainfalls, now overwhelm Nachivuo, spilling into homes, shops, and roads. And it seems the channel is facing its greatest assault yet. Businessman Ham Chugun has been granted the go-ahead by the president to cover part of it and build commercial properties above the covered section. Almost overnight, after securing the approval, Kigun moved to cross part of the channel and began construction, sparking fierce criticism. One of the biggest concerns is that no proper study or assessment has been conducted on how his project will affect the channel's capacity to control Kampara's flats. What will this mean for the city dwellers? We don't know yet. Will flats linger longer in Kampara? Will transport be disrupted more frequently? Will more lives be lost? For now, the city waits to see.